Hi, and welcome to our closing ceremonies. I have the privilege of introducing Robin Ox, who is an educator, speaker, grassroots activist, and the editor of By Women Quarterly. She is also editor of two anthologies, the 42 Countries Collection, Getting By Voices of Bisexuals Around the World, and Recognize the Voices of Bisexual Men. Their writings have been published in numerous bisexual, women's studies, multicultural, and LGBTQ anthologies, and they have also taught courses on LGBTQ plus history of sexual orientation and the experiences of those who transgress the binary categories of gay and straight, masculine and feminine, black and white, and male and female. Robin could not be here live with us today, and she very graciously recorded a brief video. Um, so bear with me while I get this set up. Um, and I hope you enjoy. Hello and greetings from Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Robin Oaks. I go by she and they pronouns. And September this month marks 46 years that I have identified as bisexual. It has been an amazing phase. In fact, it's comprised 73% of my entire life and 100% of my entire adult life. I've been a bi activist for a very, very long time, for about four decades, and I can attest that we have made a great deal of progress and we still have a long way to go. Our progress includes the fact that many more people are identifying um, as bi plus, as bisexual, pansexual, queer, fluid, multisexual, and with other complex and non-binary sexual orientation labels. According to the 2021 um, US Gallup survey, 15% of all adults in Generation Z um, identify as bisexual, compared to fewer than 1% in my generation. It's obvious that today's young people in most parts of the world have access to much more information and have the ability to imagine themselves as bi. In part, this is because they see themselves represented in the government, in media, in popular culture. Um, some folks in some places don't have that direct access and they have to look abroad to find this representation. But information is increasingly global and it travels widely. So we're also finally collecting information specifically about bi plus people. Large LGBTQIA plus studies are finally beginning to disaggregate the data so that we can find out how bi plus folks are doing. The answer, sadly, is not all that well, but it's very important that we have this information. Most funding and programs are data driven in order to get funding for a program, you need to make a case for resources. And finally, we have some of the data and information that we need to make that case, to begin creating programs, to begin assigning resources to addressing um, the disparities and challenges that we face. We still need to convince others to give us enough actual funding and resources, but at least now we can finally make a clear case that funding and resources are needed. Another change is that there are an increasing number of out by plus research researchers who understand our community's needs. Just look at the lineup for this conference. We are increasing in number and we are a global force. We are so much more visible than we have ever been before. Um, and yet, of course, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but we can do it and we are doing it. Spaces like this are one way that we're making change. I am so grateful to the folks who imagined and organized this space, bringing the work of more than 60 scholars and activists into one space to share information. I'm also grateful to every single person who showed up today to listen and learn from them. And I am, I will soon, once it happens, be grateful to folks who who listen to this recording in, at a future time. Um, spaces like this are a really important way to make change. They're also a really 
great way to grow community. The next time that you feel alone, the next time you feel like nobody cares about BIPLUS people, remember this conference, remember this day. Everyone here cares about BIPLUS people. Everyone here cares deeply about BIPLUS people. And I will end with a call for action because there's something you can do to help move us forward. Share what you learned here today. Share links to the conference website with your colleagues, with your friends, with random strangers, with folks on social media. The panels for the 21, from the 2021 um, International Bisexual Research Conference are already available online, and the panels from this year's conference soon will be. So make sure that lots of people know about this resource. And when next year's conference rolls around, make sure to let others know that the conference is happening and let them know how to register for it. Let them know that it's free. Tell one person, tell 10 people, tell 100 or 1,000 people. And wherever you are, if you hear that there is a conference being organized or planned, make sure that that conference has BIPLUS programming as part of its schedule, unless it's a conference about the polar ice caps or about horticulture or astronomy. If it's a conference that's about humans and people, ask the conference organizers what they have planned and make program suggestions. If you are a researcher or a teacher or someone else who knows what you're talking about, offer to organize a session yourself. This is how things change. We can do this. We are doing this, all of us, together. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank Robin, not only for her video, but also for the ongoing work that they do for the BiPlus community. Just days after Robin shared her video with me, she and a group of BiPlus leaders and activists were welcomed at the White House for the first ever roundtable on BiPlus health equity that was hosted by the Biden administration, which is really a, mark, a remarkable milestone over here on our side of the pond. I would now like to introduce Krista Morehouse, who is an emerging bisexual poet and is working on her first full poetry collection. Her main career is as a celebrity makeup artist in the film and TV industry, However, Krista is quickly making a name for herself in the poetry worlds. Over to you, Krista. It's not letting me start my video. I'm here. Well, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Hello, I'm Krista. I first want to start out by thanking everyone for allowing me to be a part of this and to share some poetry with you all. I know this is an academic event, but I think adding in some of the arts in there and finishing on that kind of note is really special. So I hope that in the stuff that I'm able to share with you all today that you find something that resonates with you. I chose some pieces that cover a wide genre of my bisexual experience, some things that are happier, some things that are a little bit heavier, but that's the reality of what my experience has been. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. And I hope that you can too. So I'm going to dive right into it since time is limited and start off with the first piece that is talking about coming outs. And specifically for me, sometimes coming outs don't quite go as planned. My confession, I didn't come out of the closet. I tripped. I stumbled out head over heels. The words sprinted out of me before I could process them, our heated arguments screeching to a halt. I had not planned to reveal this side of myself to you yet, but before I knew it, I was floating outside of my body, hearing my voice declare, because I'm bisexual. Time as I once knew it ceased to exist as the words escaped my lips. I collapsed on the floor like a child, desperate to recapture my truth and lock it behind the steel bars of my teeth until I was prepared to release it. Those words hung in the air like a bloody admission trapped in a confessional, the deafening sound of your silence echoing through the 343 miles between us. Well, I notice when a woman is beautiful, 
You couldn't wrap your mind around the difference between attraction and aesthetic beauty. I felt your chest tighten as you began to lose control of the situation. The image of me you spent years painting being washed clean in an instant. Bible verses engulfed you as you grasped for proof that this wasn't just a phase. I guess you could have blind faith in a God, but not me. With me, you needed proof. I'm gonna roll right into the next one. And this next piece is a love letter to my, my partner in ways. And it's about that feeling of being in love and wanting to share your life with somebody and not just your life right now and your future, but your past and where you've come from. So this piece is called, Come Home With Me. When I say I wanna take you home, I don't mean to where I rest my head now. I mean to where the seeds of my first trauma were planted. Let me be the tour guide of the nest that I leapt from the first second I was able to, praying I had enough strength to fly on my own. I wanna kiss you in every closet I've ever come out of. I wanna walk you past the locker I spent four years wanting to crawl inside of. I want us to dance through the apple orchards and sing to the trees that grew up alongside me. I wanna hold your hand in front of the church that believes God loves everyone, except those with rainbows in their bloodstreams. I wanna watch you shake the hand of the woman who sewed me together in her stomach for nine months. I wanna fill our mouths with soft serve by the lake, loving you in the first place a boy proclaimed he liked me. I want to see Main Street through your eyes and hear the hum of my sleepy town through your ears. I want to sketch your perfect smile on a takeout napkin and tape it to the wall of the one art gallery in town. Attach a post-it note at the corner of it, labeling it priceless. I can show you the houses I grew up in, the theater that became my second home, and the mailbox that almost became my headstone the night my tire blew me across their lawn. Let's lay beneath the old oak tree in my mother's front yard as I read you middle school diary entries. I'll serenade you with a song that played during my first kiss as I whisper, my God, I love you, into the dandelion I slip behind your ear. Make a wish, my darling. Wish this moment will never fade away. This next piece is also about my partner and is very much about that feeling of falling in love for the very first time and specifically saying those words and how scary that can be, especially in queer settings when we grow up in a society that doesn't make that a safe thing for us to do. Helpless. As those words dance from your lips, my heart catapults into a display of backflips from the safety of my chest but how can I say those three words in return? I can't. For once they escape the fortress of my mouth, I can't take them back. Each echo of love casting another stone at my heartbreak when we inevitably fall apart. Those words, heavy as an unwritten future, claw at my tongue, though flooding me with joy so sweet, I would happily bleed out from the memory of the taste of this love. It's not until there is silence between us, jovial tears filling my eyes, that I know I can't deny this flare in my chest. Embers burning bright towards a flame as your words stoke their fire. Catch me, I'm falling. I'm falling headfirst into the unknown, into the unexplored, into what could be, into you and me. I wish I could spread my arms as I free fall into you and soar through the breeze. But my mind is racing, swirling, twisting deep like the tornado at the bottom of the drain as I map out every route in which my heart could come crashing with yours, leaving us both in shambles. My mind begging me to run, my heart commanding me to stay. After all, my angel, you are worth every bruise and scratch that could come from this fall. I would be honored to be broken by you, blessed to spend years writing poetry to heal my wounds. But that word has never escaped the cage of my teeth to find home in the heart of someone I craved. With no promise of tomorrow, I'm trying to live in today. So I guess with that being said, I should tell you, my darling, my Andy, I am helplessly in love with you. This next piece kind of takes things in a different direction and gets a little bit heavier. It comes into that feeling of sometimes people live in that gray area of acceptance. They're not the strong ally that we want, but they're also not disowning us and kicking us out of the house. They're kind of in this in-between. And that can be a really hard space to accept that from people. So this kind of captures that feeling. I don't like the sound of it after O'Malley Stewerman. My mother doesn't like the word partner. 
Here's insult, here's other, here's not real love. Instead calls them my friend, ignoring the sound of my heart splintering deep in my chest. Calls them my friend, an attempt to cut their name from my tongue, sand the touch of their skin from my fingertips and bleach me clean, wash me holy, conceal the bloom of our love from the world so that no one can see the real me. Well, what am I supposed to call her then? Shit them, no him. She stumbles through. You call them my partner, the person I'm dating, the person I love, the one who through much persistence got me to let down my walls and expose myself to another soul, oblivious to the history she is erasing each time she simplifies our bond to friendship. She doesn't stop to think how that word would feel to have shot at her marriage, justifies her unease with, well, I heard it's insulting, pulling one person from the parade and plastering them the poster child for love rather than listening to my words. To some it may still be, but many have reclaimed it. I have repeatedly told you they are my partner, studying me from afar as she compares every move I make to the closeted ones who mind their manners, wishing I could be more like the quiet queers who don't make their sexuality and identity, though behind closed doors praise I'm not like any of them. They are not my friend. They are my world. But I guess she won't like the sound of that either. I have two more pieces to share with you all today. This next one is very nostalgic and talks about the idea of being an adult now and looking back on memories that you didn't think much of in the moment, but now you see it in hindsight as very obvious signs that you were queer. <laughs> the signs were there. As kids, we drank wine from honeysuckles drunk on sunbeams cloaking us in secrets. We burst into the yard at the first sign of light with the promise of your mother's voice to call us back home. It's time to let the sun go to sleep. Our daily adventures as we rehouse ladybugs to old blackberry jam jars, wondering what happened to boy bugs, officiating weddings between your chickens even though they were all girls. I never knew why my chest swelled each time I got to play the husband as we played countless hours of house in the garden, grass rings ordaining you my wife. I have a wife, but isn't this how all little girls play? Grade school girl on girl action rationalized because you only had Barbies. We did just fine without Ken. Role play doctor, obsession with Ariel, sneaking peeks between pages of your mother's art books under the protection of our pillow fort and catching a glimpse of marble breasts and thinking, I just wanna be her. Soft stone, smooth as velvet, each curve and dimple proclaimed art. Little did I know that deep inside, I wanted to protect her, caress her, slide a grass band around her wedding finger, kiss my stone bride as you threw the rice all before your mother called us back inside for dinner. I wanna thank you all again for letting me be a part of this. I'm gonna close out with one final piece. Um, this poem is one that I hope to take. Oftentimes our bisexuality can be used as a weapon against us. It can be used filled with anger and hate as people try and attack something they don't understand. And this piece is trying to take that feeling and instead using that as a call to action for love and leading with the beauty of what being bisexual is. So I hope that these words resonate with you. Bye, love you. There was a time when loving you was criminal. I hate to say it often still is. Though where we stand now, we commit no crime. Each time we kiss, it feels like treason. And I will never stop craving that taste. Each time you hold my hand in public, we lead the rebellion, the warmth of your lips caressing battle cries into the soft of my wrist. Each time a pickup truck brands me a fucking dyke, patriarchy shooting from the hiss of his tongue. All I can hear is your morning voice declare, my God, you're beautiful. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this day. This has been really, really special. If you want to see more of my poetry, you can follow me on Instagram at Kirsta Shea. Wow, Kirsta, um, that was so powerful. Um, thank you for sharing your words and letting us into your world. Um, we have heard from so many remarkable people today, and we at the Bisexual Research Group are grateful for the generosity, care, and effort that each of our presenters invested in their work and sharing their work with us today. As the invisible majority, Bi Plus events like this are so important, not only for visibility, but for the sharing of our stories and knowledge with others, 
building community, feeling connectedness, and being in spaces where we can just be by without explanation or the need to validate ourselves. To all of the leaders, researchers, activists, artists, and community members here with us today who are advancing equity for the community, thank you for shining a light on the invisible, for lifting others up, and for giving voice to our community. So thanks to each of you for all that you do in advancing this charge. As Robin noted earlier, we have made a great deal of progress, but there is still so much work to be done. Thank you to everyone in our audience. I know for some of you that this has been a very long day and we appreciate you sticking through it with us. And a quick housekeeping note, please keep your eyes open for a post-event survey coming from Zoom. Your feedback is really helpful in helping us shape future events and conferences. I hope you all found today's programming insightful and valuable and that you're leaving here with a sense of optimism and hope about the future. I know I am. And to close, I'd like to leave everyone with a brief reminder offered by Hafsa earlier today. It's not your job to justify that you exist. Your existence is activism. And I would add your existence is revolutionary. So on behalf of all of us at the Bisexual Research Group, thank you again for being here with us today. And we look forward to welcome you back next year. Thanks so much, everyone.